All right, as promised, we've got a huge show for you guys tonight. The first half of the show is myself reviewing Monday Night Raw that took place last night, the final Monday Night Raw, the final WWE televised event before Crown Jewel. And on the second half of the show, we've got Ashley Mann back with us to talk about Crown Jewel with all of her predictions and thoughts. So this is a jam-packed show. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's get everything going right after this. So if you guys don't know who Austin Cook is, He's a national U.S. champion in judo. He is a U.S. Open champion, a World Cup medalist, and he just launched his own YouTube channel. It's called Bad Boy Medicine. And right now there's a promo video up there. It's only a minute long and it's already got over 10,000 views. And there's going to be a lot more content coming. For example, he is going to be interviewing UFC champion Marilo Bustamante. So that's going to be going on the YouTube channel. Of course, on Instagram, you can also follow him at Bad Boy Medicine. Go check out the promo video as well. This is this is a YouTube channel that's going to grow very quickly, guys. Again, it's Bad Boy Medicine. So if you love combat sports and performance medicine, you're not going to want to miss this. So subscribe right now to Bad Boy Medicine. When the Universe Speaks, Pod Show drops episodes almost every Friday. Join your hosts, Mojo, The Big Gringo, and Rooster Boy for a beer review, a meme of the week, voicemails from the weirdos, and your live calls. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share their content on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and every social media platform. Of course, you can, of course, hear them on any podcast providers such as Apple, Spotify, Google, and you can even get stickers, t-shirts, hoodies, koozies simply by clicking the links in the description of their show on YouTube or by shooting the guys a message. So when the universe speaks, just listen. Go to youtube.com slash universe speaks. So don't wait. Go give these three Navy vets some support by subscribing to them on YouTube or any podcast platform. It is a really entertaining show. Again, that's youtube.com slash universe speaks, and you can find them on Apple Podcasts and any other podcast app at When the Universe Speaks. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants me. Says I just ripped your ass. This is my You're me. All right, everybody, welcome to the WWE podcast. Big week here on the show and in wrestling. If you're a WWE fan, we've got a lot going on this week as uh, Raw has just ended. And now, of course, we're turning our attention to Crown Jewel in just a couple of days, or depending on when you're listening to this, it could be today or, or maybe even uh, in the past. It's all relative, but we're going to preview tonight Crown Jewel with Ashley Mann, and I'll be doing the Monday Night Raw review solo up front, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get through that as quickly as we can to get to Ashley, uh, which I'm really excited about. As always, such a great guest and a long-time, long-time co-host. You know, uh, she's really been here since the beginning of time when the WWE podcast came into existence. She's been here a few years, so uh, it's it's really great to have her back. It wouldn't be a pay-per-view without Ashley giving her thoughts and her opinions and her predictions for the show. So uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. First, thank you for joining me here as we are just kind of closing in on Crown Jewel. I think a lot of WWE fans are just going to be excited when this whole thing is over and we get to move on to you know regularly scheduled programming with WWE pay-per-views. But be careful what you wish for because Survivor Series is next on the docket, and uh, that one... If you want regular pay-per-views, may not really fit your taste. It doesn't fit mine. And they've really, I think, just completely blown up what Survivor Series used to mean and how ex- excited I used to get for it and made it an exhibition pay-per-view that has no consequences whatsoever. They have toned down the brand versus brand thing. At least last year they did, but uh, you know, the, I'm sure they'll try to incorporate that again this year, at least to some degree, and try to make us excited for matchups that should not happen. Because you know this is not a, a cross a co-branded pay-per-view in which 
there should be men and women fighting from each brand. You just had the brand split, and now we're going right back to seeing the same uh, individuals fight again. Um, you know, but we'll get to that pay per view when we get to Survivor Series. Uh, November always scares me, but uh, again, thank you everybody for joining me. If you want the ads removed, I know a lot of you. Uh, it's not a, not your favorite part of the show. There's a couple options. You can of course go to Apple Podcasts. Right on our front page, there's a get rid of those pesky ads button, literally, and you click on that, and uh, you get seven days free. So you'll be to get to listen to every show we do, including the Crown Jewel review, uh, ad free, and you get to try it for seven days. And uh, let me know what you think. If you like to stick around, it's only two ninety nine a month. After that, you'll get every show we ever do ad free, or you can join us on Patreon, and uh, for a dollar a month, you get everything ad free, everything. So think about it. Good time to join as we ramp up into the end of the year and then Royal Rumble. And before you know it, bam, WrestleMania season's upon us again. That's how quickly things happen. Um, but all right. Well, let's talk about Monday Night Raw. And let's start with Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair. Now, why Bianca Belair was awarded a Raw Women's Championship match really makes little to no sense. We don't know why. Again, Contenders matches are supposed to be believed as people that are people that win those matches. Con- competitors that win those matches are supposed to be in contention for the championship because apparently number one contender doesn't exist anymore. But Bianca has done uh, nothing really to earn it. And uh, they just wanted to make the biggest match they could, even though it would make no sense to have Charlotte retain the championship if she's going to SmackDown. And Ashley and I, by the way, went into crazy depth about the possibilities of Charlotte retaining and then having Becky lose. And yet the SmackDown Women's Championship is on Raw. The Women's this Raw Women's Championship is on SmackDown. Do they do a title swap? And we, we really just go into depth of crazy just frustration over the convolutedness of this whole women, all the women on every show and why the championship matches are being awarded and how does this work if the championship is exclusive to the show and yet the talent's exclusive to a different show. We we really got frustrated, but it was it was a lot of fun talking with Ashley about this specifically. So you'll hear more about it uh, a little bit on our uh, on our believe it or not, our crown jewel preview and prediction show, which is immediately following this. So anyway, uh, Charlotte comes out at the beginning of the show does a nice job of uh, of delivering her promo here. I really enjoyed um, Charlotte on the mic. She just seems to be getting more and more confident, honestly. And ever since she came back from injury, it's just like she's been reinvented. Ever since she started calling herself the opportunity, it, it really does feel exactly like that. But uh, Charlotte asked why there was no celebration for her in, in the final night before she moves to SmackDown and complained she was being forced to defend her championship in, the, in that night's main event and pointed out that Bianca was being given shots at both Raw and SmackDown titles in a four-day stretch. And then Bianca came out to confront uh, uh, Flair with eventually the, just a breaking down into a, a fight. And so we get the Raw Women's Championship match. Bianca Belair defeats Charlotte via disqualification when Charlotte used a steel chair in what was otherwise, again, a really good match. And boy, God, is Bianca just so good. And and Charlotte as well. I I would never mind seeing these two in a match Uh, again. I think there's a lot more to come. But this ends at a DQ because they felt, WWE felt, that they couldn't give the championship to Belair, who, by the way, is going to be part of Raw. So you'd think that she would have won it here. But Charlotte, they're still trying to protect, and having her be a champion on SmackDown to them makes is, is more of a priority because I think they're going to switch the championships like they did last year with the Raw and SmackDown tag titles. I think they're going to do the same here with the, the women's ta- championships. So they want Charlotte a champion on SmackDown, which will eventually morph into the SmackDown Women's Championship. So I, I did expect some kind of wonky finish for sure in this one. Uh, King of the Ring semifinals, Xavier Woods defeats Jinder Mahal after a rope walk elbow. And it's going to be in the finals, Finn Balor versus Xavier Woods for the King of the Ring title at Crown Jewel. Uh, I won't give away who I think is going to win because the preview and prediction show will give you that. But I will just say that uh, th- this match was was good. And Xavier continues to show why he could easily go off on his own. Hint, hint. Hint, effing hint. Um, I, I'm really over, though, the the whole just acting like children every single time they're on a microphone 
with the interviewer before they go out to the ring. And I don't know. I just, to me, always acting like children when you're getting paid a man's salary is embarrassing, among many, many, many other things that um, just despi- I despise about the New Day. Uh, Kofi and Xavier, to me, are just the absolute worst part of the New Day. And I mean that in a character's perspective. I don't mean that on a personal level, nor do I mean that on an in-ring competitive, uh, a competitor's level. They're both very good in the ring. It's all about character here. Just same the problem I have with uh, Big E, but let's move on. Austin Theory defeats Jeff Hardy via pinfall after hitting the Theory KO. Um, and our truth was interrupted backstage and uh, because it was our truth was in pursuit of the 24 seven championship. And then truth accepted a match on behalf of Jeff Hardy, setting up a rematch for, of last week's clash after theory won, he took a selfie with Hardy only to be hit with a twist of fate before Hardy took a selfie of his own. So Hardy gets a little bit of retribution, even though he loses to Austin theory. So, I think the most interesting part of this is to see if we see Willow or another alter ego of Jeff Hardy on SmackDown. Like that's that's really what we're looking forward to. Drew McIntyre and Big E defeat Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode via pinfall after Big E hit Roode with a big ending. After brawling during their tag team match, McIntyre and E got along this week until after the match when they exchanged words. So, the, you know, they actually didn't implode on one another. They did coexist. So that's a rare feat when you have foes put in a match, a tag team match that usually they implode in some capacity. They didn't, and they function pretty well as a tag team. Um, although, I, I, and I said this with Ashley, I don't understand their relationship. I don't understand their on-screen relationship anyway, where they are just best buds. They have their cool little secret uh, insider handshakes at times, like you know they're, they're brothers, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, for no reason, they just start flipping out at each other in the ring. It's very bipolar. I don't understand it at all. But here we are with Big E and Drew having to have a championship match at Crown Jewel. You'll hear our predictions in just a few minutes. Mansoor defeats Cedric Alexander via pinfall. I don't really have much to say there other than Mansoor is just being groomed for the crowd in Saudi Arabia. So they're building him up a little, I guess. Uh, And by the way, if it sounds like I'm reading, I am. I'm reading from CBS Sports just so I don't miss anything that happened on Raw especially the things that weren't on the, the Hulu version. Uh, so I'm not, it's not that I didn't watch Raw and I'm just relying on the descriptions of the show. I'm not that lazy, I promise. Okay, uh, next on the, the docket here, Bobby Lashley and Goldberg participated in a remote interview where Goldberg again vowed to kill Lashley, which Lashley pointed out as criminal. Before saying Goldberg couldn't kill him anyway, Lashley finished by issuing a warning that Goldberg has never faced him without restrictions like the No Holds Barred match at Crown Jewel. So uh, Ashley and I also talked about this, but I'll briefly just say that uh, this this match is not one I'm looking forward to because of the limitations of Goldberg in the ring. And when you start talking about killing your opponent, it reeks of desperation for attention to this match because I think on its own merit with typical wrestling build and story, they could not get the the crowd interested in this because it was so poorly recepted at the last pay-per-view poorly received. So when they go the route of just extreme, that tells you that they are in desperation mode to make this match relevant. That's all. And it's no disrespect to Bobby, but that's just the reality of it. Um, Ashley and I also talk about Gage and what we'd love to see happen at Crown Jewel. It gets a little bit morbid. I will say that in a fun way. Uh, okay. RK bro defeats the street profits via disqualification after interference by AJ and Omos or Omos styles hit Randy Orton with a phenomenal forearm in the middle of the match resulting in the DQ Omos then attacked riddle before the team also took out the profits. So almost stood tall. Randy Orton gets uh, a little bit of, uh, or rather AJ gets payback on Randy after getting hit with an RKO two weeks in a row. And so logic would dictate that RK bro should retain at crown jewel, but I'll let you mull over that for a few minutes. Uh, this was fine. You know, I I think the Street Profits are absolutely here to stay in the tag team division in a tag team division that is paper thin. They are really one of like three teams that exist, which is like two more teams than the women have. 
So this was fine. I, I didn't have any issue with this. I really didn't. Um, RK Bro seems to be on the same page. I hope that they have a little bit longer of a reign, at least a couple of months before they decide to potentially break them up. Uh, but okay. The Queen's Crown semifinals do drop defeats Shayna Baszler via pinfall after countering with the countering the Karafuda clutch. Dewdrop advances to face Selena Vega in the finals at Crown Jewel. So Dewdrop does score a victory here, but a believable one because she used her weight. They won't say that because it's offensive, but that's the fact. I mean, that's physics. She used her mass to keep the shoulders of Baszler down. End of story can't say that right we're in a different world now but that's the reality and i have nothing against dewdrop I'm, I'm a fan of dewdrop i think she's got a great future and i think her her weight is an asset not a comedy segment that, that uh, vince probably looks at it as but dewdrop does advance it was a bit surprising given shana basil was just snapping arms and then she loses to dewdrop cleanly it was that that part of it i was like hmm uh, you know i'm not super discouraged by it because you know dewdrop is on the ascent and she's in the finals, but it was just like, oh, really? You know, Shayna Baszler was just snapping arms and being the Shayna Baszler we all want. And then she loses to, uh, you know, Dewdrop cleanly. So take that for what you will. I'm not going to look too much into that. We'll have to see what happens after the Crown Jewel pay-per-view when all the rosters are reset and the, the official season premiere begins. But uh, all right. Finn Balor defeats Mace via pinfall after hitting the coup de gras. Uh, Woods was out to watch his King of the Ring opponent live and Finn Balor and uh, Xavier Woods come face to face and have some words. And they were, I don't know, they were yelling at each other. I, I didn't even really pay attention to exactly what they were saying. I think I think Xavier said something about Finn Balor's the prince, but I, I'm going to be one promoted to King or something like that. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I have a pick that I think you're going to be interested in for who I think is going to win that match at Crown Jewel. And why, while I hate the decision, I hope it's for the right reason. That'll make more sense when you hear it. Uh, hear my fleshed out uh, answer to who I think is going to win the King of the Ring. So that essentially was Monday Night Raw. This is a little bit more of an abbreviated version of my Raw review, but I'm so excited to get to be able to get the Ashley and myself conversation with Crown Jewel and respect to Crown Jewel to you guys that I didn't want to drag on too long about Monday Night Raw because... Next week really is the reset button truly being hit because the rosters are reset officially. We're past Crown Jewel. We're back to regularly scheduled programming, and we can all take a sigh of relief and see where the dust settles. So, um, guys, don't forget to also subscribe to us on uh, Patreon if you want to add free and Discord server access and a shout out, as well as on Apple Podcasts for seven days free ad free. Uh, seven days. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Seven days for free, you get all our content ad-free. <clears throat> so consider joining us there. So with all that being said, thank you, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow night with your mailbag. So send in your questions to realwwepodcast at gmail.com or call in at 518-952-0247 with your voicemails. And uh, until then, I'll talk to you next time. Okay, well, WWE Crown Jewel is just a couple days away as I record this. On a Thursday, I'll never get used to saying that, that it's on a Thursday at noon when everyone in, 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 in the continental United States is probably working. Uh, we'll be uh, being able to view, some of you maybe, uh, Crown Jewel coming to us from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It is actually a kingdom, guys. I did get confirmation of that. They didn't just add that in as some kind of fluff. It is truly a kingdom. It's designated as a quote-unquote kingdom. So we've got Saudi Arabia uh, on the docket here for Crown Jewel, and uh, I've got Ashley Mann back with me, as is tradition, to cover the Crown Jewel pay-per-view with all the predictions, all of the preview, and welcome back, Ashley. It's not a pay-per-view without you. Hello, hello, Matt. Thank you so much for having me. It and you're right. It, it is back to our normal tradition of the preview shows, but it's it is so weird of being on a Thursday. It, it makes my whole week feel thrown off to think that there's a quote unquote pay per view that you know, like oh, I need to check up and see like who did what and just stuff like that. So it's during the week. It just really throws you off, kind of like with just like the whole AEW on Saturday last week. It just if one little thing moves wrestling wise in your world, it's like your whole week is thrown off. 
Yeah, yeah, it does. It really screws you up. I know that, like a lot of people, and I don't have time, but the AEW fans I watch on a regular basis, everyone was all screwed up last week. Oh. Uh, yeah, it, just, it does because you, you, a lot of people build their week around wrestling and, and uh, the show that's going to be on Wednesday night. Okay, it's Dynamite on Wednesday night. Okay, got it. I'm going to do this and this. And they, they, I, a lot of people do. They build their schedules around wrestling and when they'll be able to watch it. And with, with uh, WWE Crown Jewel on a Thursday, it, it feels... It feels almost like a taboo Tuesday. Like it's it's very yeah, bizarre, yeah. right? Like, and I, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's some political reason or uh, governmental reason for it being on a Thursday and not a weekend. I'd imagine, but uh, nonetheless, we have a lot to talk about on this on this pay per view. And um, I, I guess let's really just kind of get into it. What? Well, let me ask this: What are you most looking forward to on this pay per view in terms of matches or potential returns? Yeah, I'm not really thinking there's going to be anything return wise, or honestly, like nothing that has popped out to me, unless I'm just completely overlooking something that's obvious. Come on, Elias um, is still out there. He's, oh, yeah. he's, maybe he's still burning See, his there. stuff in the woods. I don't know. That's why I had you, Matt. That's why I had you here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, speaking of like, that's so weird. Like yeah. they, it's kind of like with the whole Alistair Black thing. Like they do all these promos, and like they, but at least Alistair came back for one week. But Elias didn't even make a return. He just. Like through like burned his guitar right, and he, then like was in the woods, and then just that was it. Yeah, I mean m- maybe he's with uh, Brandon. Uh, Brandon, the guy everyone's looking for. Brandon, uh, what's his name, right? So, uh, Gabby Petito's fiance. Maybe he's out there. Oh, like, Brian you know, uh, yeah. maybe he's out there, and they're they're buddying Brian. up and lost in the uh, lost in the forest. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's <laughs> uh, right now. Yeah, I don't know where the hell Elias is. I don't know when he's coming back. I'm sure he'll pop up out of nowhere. Um, but you know, what, what about this? Are you looking forward to? The main event of Brock Lesnar uh, versus Roman Reigns, maybe the Hell in a Cell match between Edge and Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg. Like, do you have a match specific? <laughs> do you have a match specifically that you're like, okay, this isn't technically a true pay per view, especially from those watching in the United States. It's kind of like watching Insurrection overseas when they did that pay per view for the UK. It's like it's a pay per view that exists and we'll accept it, but it's it seems like a lot of people don't truly consider it a pay per view. But do you have a match? specifically that you're like okay i'm i'm actually invested in this yeah i think and and to be fair i think it's a really good lineup like it's it's solid the, the only thing that and again like we mentioned not to go off on a tangent or anything and not to get too detailed but it's like it's one of those cards where it's like dang like you you really wish you could get more hype for it but due to everything surrounding the event itself it's you know one of those shows that you know the majority or i'm not gonna say the majority but probably a good amount of people aren't gonna watch for various reasons you know to each their own so it's kind of kind of sucks that it's they put all this work and build into a, a such a solid and pretty good card and it's just kind of like the feel good aspect of it isn't quite there so that kind of sucks but man i the the match that i'm look, most looking forward to is that reigns and lesnar match and i think for me, it, it's obvious just because the the story itself, like it's just it's without you know without a doubt the best thing going into you right now, in my opinion at least. Maybe someone out there, you know, things like the women is is much better, but I don't know. I just think that this whole story and the intrigue with Paul, you know, and and who's he really with? And I don't know if you you saw his tweet. I think it was maybe today or maybe it was yesterday or it was a post he did saying that he was going to. It may have actually been a post. Um, that he was going to leave crown jewel you know with the heavyweight universal champion but he didn't specifically mention roman Uh, reigns name mm. so it's like things like that that i mean like we've we've talked about before paul is just a master at so Mm. not to get too much into it but yeah i think that that one in and of itself like i I would want to watch the show just for that match i think for me that's my second match and it's a close very very close second just simply because the storyline's really really good roman reigns everything he touches right now is is it just turns to magic uh brock lesnar is brock lesnar um we, we all know what he brings to the table i don't think it's going to be like a, a five minute match i do believe it'll be 10 12 minutes at least um but, you know i don't think it'll be again it's not a goldberg special some people think it's going to be trying to be finish 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 i highly doubt that these two have a lot of experience in the ring and we'll get to the full preview on that match in a minute but for me, I think that the most the match that I'm most emotionally invested in, and again, it's a close second for me, but the, my top one is Seth Rollins and Edge. 
And uh, just because of how great the promos have been with both guys, uh, both of them are at the top of their games, particularly Seth Rollins, who has really fallen into this this character that he just whoever whatever this is, is truly the, the character that Seth was meant to play coming out in ridiculous outfits, um, his promo style. Starting out kind of soft and, and jokey and and just kind of obnoxious and then turning into this eventually just screaming anger like that has been his his promo style and, and cadence over the last several months. And it's been really, really great. It's not just Dolph Ziggler screaming, you know, zero to 100 for everything he says has to be yelled. Seth makes it make sense when he starts to amp up his voice for what he's talking about. Um, I really enjoyed that. Uh, the home invasion with Seth and, and Edge was was uh, it, it was it was very PG of a home invasion. I'll say that there's a lot more he could have done other than sit his ki- sit at his kitchen table and eat an apple and orange juice, which, by the way, is like the worst combination in the history of combination yeah. of foods. Like so, <laughs> yeah, I'm dude, telling you, everybody go like it's like that's like having a toothpaste and orange juice. I mean, oh. it's a bad combination. I, I don't know why. Why he chose no out of he everything there. The apple. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's probably trying not to sell it. I mean, it's just yeah. like he's oh right, like. Um, but in a PG environment, is about as home invasiony as it could have been. But um, it, I really have enjoyed Edge's intensity. I love how they're bringing the sell back when it actually makes sense and not yeah. just there as part of the damn schedule. That's been excellent for me. And uh, so I, I'm really invested in this in terms of just the violence of this match. Sadly, in a PG environment, this is where it kind of caps the potential because unless there's a gift from the wrestling gods of somebody getting busted open the hard way, blood is needed in this match, in this rivalry, and particularly it being the third one. It's the blow off inside of a cell. Um, I, I really am hoping that if blood happens, it's either somehow approved by Vince or if it happens the hard way that it's obviously done safely in, in the most safe way, safest way possible, of course. But uh, th- that to me is the number one match I, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you 100 percent. And to be fair, that's that is right up there with what I'm most looking forward to as well. And like you said, I've always been a Seth Rollins fan. And, but this this incarnation of Seth is just my favorite as well. I think. The way he kind of transitioned from that Messiah version of Seth into this kind of like hybrid of all of his past incarnations. Mm-hmm. It's just it's 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 just amazing. And the little laugh that he does, sometimes I think he can hold back a little bit on it, but man, like it's just it a lot of times it just it's needed and it's it's just obnoxious and it's just him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he is such a good heel that it's just Everything that he's doing right now, I know a lot of people aren't really that hot on him, but I, everything that he's doing the past few months especially, I've just really been a fan of. And I'm just – I'm excited, like you said, to see that this direction is – I'm assuming this is the blow-off. And like you had mentioned, the cell finally being used for what it was originally designed for, you know, to, to put it into a feud and to, to, for the final chapter. So to see it actually being used for that is, is so refreshing, and it's just – it goes back to the, like, you, you wish that they would kind of just do away with the whole Hell in a Cell gimmick pay-per-view itself because it would make this match mean even much more if we hadn't just seen a Cell this year. But even with that aspect, you know, like, the, these two guys, like, they deserve credit. So, like, even if we did just have, like, a full pay-per-view of Cell matches, I'm still that excited to see this one because of the story and, and the work that they put into it. So it, it's definitely going to be a hard-hitting match. And, man, I, I hope we get blood. <laughs> like, as weird as that is, like, I just... I hope, like you said, we get something because it's it's just not a cell match without it. And to think that all the like blood baths that we've seen in the past in a hell in a cell, and to think that now we can't even get like a little stream of blood, it's just man, it's just it's sad. It, it is. Uh, it's a tragedy. It is what yeah. it is. The, and I don't want blood all the time. I don't want no, chair shots yeah. to the head all the time. But if there was ever a time to do it, this is one of the deserving rivalries. It. Yeah. Like if you could somehow get a chair that's, uh, you know, a worked chair that's actually safe somehow to hit somebody in the head. Like this is the time to do it. Uh, Just uh, ask for forgiveness later, guys. Yeah, exactly. I You're mean, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Like Exactly. And th- if there was ever a time for the wrestling gods, like at WrestleMania 31 with Brock and Roman Reigns, that apparently wasn't supposed to happen with Brock getting busted open that blood that uh, Brock had in that that match uh, again was uh, just added to the drama of the match and so I'm really hoping that that happens I I think at the very least we might get thumbtacks um, I, I, I could see thumbtacks coming out in this match. Um, you know, somehow they they're okay with that. Uh, I, I've seen thumbtacks in a PG environment before, 
and uh, some, you know, chair shots and, um, you know, uh, blood could just just a simple little quick razor blades cut to the head is unacceptable. But, um, you know, who knows? Maybe the wrestling gods will shine down upon us uh, on Thursday, uh, Thursday midday, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> but let's um, let's actually transition to the card here and, and start getting into the our predictions and uh, see how poorly we do. Although last time I got to say, I think you you might have swept the table on the last pay per view. I think I did. I, I think you I, only I got lost. one yeah. wrong though, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I got, was, it was yep. a, the one of the women matches. Yeah, it was one, one of the women's matches. Ma- Alexa Bliss, I think. I, I said she yeah, was going to win, and yeah. Uh, yeah, that didn't happen. So, other than that, yeah, yeah we were pretty damn good at the last uh, last pay per view. So let's see if we can keep that going. We're going to start with uh, Mansoor, the hometown boy, Mister Superhero, uh, that will just, he's invincible in uh, in Saudi Arabia versus Mustafa Ali or Mustafa Ali, take your pick. Ali, um, I, I, here I'll take this one first. I think it's a slam dunk that Mansoor wins. I mean, I, I don't see any reason for uh, Ali to win this match. Again, if it was somewhere else, uh, anywhere other than Saudi Arabia, I would say Ali should win this. But Mansoor in his hometown will be treated like the return of Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, he is, uh, for whatever reason, uh, other than just being a from Saudi Arabia, that's the only reason that they love him. Um, he's going to win this match. And I think it's going to be a really good match, actually, because these two are technically sound. They're young guys, athletic the quality of this match, I have no problem with, um, and Mansoor easily takes the victory on this one, and they'll probably interview him afterwards for some kind of cheesy anything you guys put your mind to, you can do it kind of thing, because yeah. that's what they do, and the crowd will go yay, and that that's a feel good moment. So, do you have any other thoughts on this, or what's your prediction? Rather, you're listening to the WWE podcast. We'll be right back after this short break. When the Universe Speaks, Pod Show drops episodes almost every Friday. Join your hosts, Mojo, The Big Gringo, and Rooster Boy for a beer review, a meme of the week, voicemails from the weirdos, and your live calls. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share their content on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and every social media platform. Of course, you can, of course, hear them on any podcast providers such as Apple, Spotify, Google, and you can even get stickers, t-shirts, hoodies, koozies, simply by clicking the links in the description of their show on YouTube or by shooting the guys a message. So when the universe speaks, just listen. Go to youtube.com slash universe speaks. So don't wait. Go give these three Navy vets some support by subscribing to them on YouTube or any podcast platform. It is a really entertaining show. Again, that's youtube.com slash universe speaks, and you can find them on Apple Podcasts and any other podcast app at When the Universe Speaks. So if you guys don't know who Austin Cook is, he's a national U.S. champion in judo. He is a U.S. Open champion, a World Cup medalist, and he just launched his own YouTube channel. It's called Bad Boy Medicine. And right now there's a promo video up there. It's only a minute long and it's already got over 10,000 views. And there's going to be a lot more content coming. For example, he is going to be interviewing UFC champion Marilo Bustamante. So that's going to be going on the YouTube channel. Of course, on Instagram, you can also follow him at Bad Boy Medicine. Go check out the promo video as well. This is this is a YouTube channel that's going to grow very quickly, guys. Again, it's Bad Boy Medicine. So if you love combat sports and performance medicine, you're not going to want to miss this. So subscribe right now to Bad Boy Medicine. Welcome back to the WWE Podcast. Let's get back to more great wrestling audio. No, I think that's actually how he ended the last one, too, by that same type of speech. So, yeah, and it's probably exactly how it's going to happen this time, too. Who did he face last time? Was it like Cesaro or someone like that? I think I think it was. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. And, you know, the thing is, like everything else to the side, he is a, a pretty solid and technical, like you said, wrestler. So yep. it is going to be a very good match. And the intensity that he showed on Monday and with his promo, like I was I was actually impressed. Like it was and it was cool that they either allowed him or he just impromptu like went off and, and spoke like his his own language and i thought that was you know pretty cool like it was it was 
a nice touch for uh, you know this the situation that we're in right now leading up to the show and you know the environment and everything so i just i just thought it was pretty cool you know and it was just a nice little like tie-in because obviously like mustafa is of i'm pretty sure of the same background as as well um but he i think he's i'm i'm pretty sure they're they're both muslim so i, I it's just a pretty cool thing because i think he had posted something saying like this is going to be the first time two Muslims mm-hmm. have faced one on one on a pay per view or something to that effect. So, again, you know, it, I'm I'm happy for them. And, and Mustafa again, he posted something else as well that he had said that he was going to donate his his earnings, I guess, from the show to a charity. So it's just it that's very cool of him. So shout out to him for for doing mm-hmm. that because I'm sure they get a nice little chunk of change for for all of that. So yeah, I'm I'm it's obvious that Mansoor is going to win because of you know where they're at. But if this were to happen, if they were to get, have a rematch, I I could see Mustafa going over and then them kind of you know going from there. But it should be good nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, I have no problem with him winning. It's it's just the hometown yeah. boys gonna gonna. He's have the a only very, one that yeah. wins in his yep. hometown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, that is. And I, I don't know if it's because of fear of, of pissing off the crowd. Uh, I, I don't know why they just will not make him lose. I mean, the heat that he would, that WWE would get, or I whoever know. beats, imagine getting a beat like, down just wait of Mansoor. Wait till the last show. Wait till the last crown jewel, like the last of their, what was it, like oh. a 10-year contract? Just wait. It's like, <laughs> just save happened. him for the main event. Yeah, and say, his, this big match, and he just gets like demolished in like just, 20 seconds. They build him up, build him up, build him up. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like main event against like, I don't know, Roman Reigns or something Roman, for the Universal yeah. Championship. People have him and believing. And he's pegged to dethrone Roman. And, yeah, and then they just have him get squashed like Kofi Kingston oh. in 11 seconds, and then they just shut the lights off and run out of the arena. Good night folks yeah good night thanks for thanks for uh thanks for your cash i mean like, I'd be, I, would, oh. I, I would uh oh my god i i would give them so much credit for that mm-hmm. i mean you talk about press you talk about people losing their, there would be a full-scale riot i mean people would actually i think uh, jump the barricade i mean it would be oh man but uh yeah no he, he's gonna win this and if they want to continue this program afterwards, I think that's fine. I, and, and they have given a Mansoor, like you said, a little bit of mic time. But I think it's all to build to this. I mean, it's almost yeah. like they have Mansoor on the roster simply for Saudi Arabia, like Saudi <laughs> Arabia events. Like that's the only reason he's employed at times. It feels like. So, um, you know, I, I'd like to see them do more with him in general. But, yeah, this he's going to win. If he doesn't and they actually try to get some heat off this, I'll give WWE credit. Like I I, yeah. I want to oh, see him sure. lose to see how the crowd reacts, but all right, uh, let's get into the Queen's Crown Finals here. So uh, let's see, I got to look at the brackets. Uh, they didn't, they don't have brackets on my screen. Awesome. Um, so the finals, I uh, correct me if I'm wrong off the top of my head here. The final is uh, Dewdrop versus uh, Zelina, Vega. Zelina Vega. Yes, yes, yeah. Zelina Vega. So take your pick on this one. Yeah. So. I honestly, my I really don't know how to feel after this past Monday. So part of me is very. I let me take even a step back. I I kind of didn't want Shayna to win the tournament just because of how the winner of these tournaments always portrayed as like a joke and you know not really taken seriously. But part of me was hopeful that this is the first Queen of the Ring tournament. Maybe they'll take it seriously. Maybe this is this could be something good, right? And it kind of plays into her character, the Queen of Spades, all that good stuff. And then she lost on Monday. And my f- initial reaction was, are you effing kidding me? Because, like, I thought that she was back on this track, you know? And then she loses and I'm just, just sitting there like, why, you know? And then... I part of me kind of snapped out of it and was like, you know what? This actually may be a very good thing because of that exact reason. She's not going to be handled down with this, this moniker and having to be referred to as the queen, say stupid catchphrases and just stuff like that. She can continue on because she's going to SmackDown, right? Uh, yes. And uh, next week. Yeah. So she can start fresh on SmackDown and just run rampage on then and just hopefully just exactly just smart, start fresh on there. So, Having said that, and kind of taking a step back with the whole tournament thing, it kind of makes sense if if someone like a Dewdrop wins. And again, like it pains me to say that because of who Piper is, you know, like how mm-hmm. great of a wrestler she is and all the good stuff. But you know, with, with what she's doing right now and this version of her, I think it's. I would have said Zelina Vega if it was maybe anyone else, but with Dewdrop being in there, I'm I'm going with Dewdrop. 
I think she's kind of the perfect fit in a weird way for this. Like she's bubbly. She jumps around. She's like always happy. Like I just not, I don't, I don't know if making a mockery of it is, is the correct way, but like she can kind of just like, I don't know. I don't know. Help me off that phrasing, but like she, I don't know. I can just see her as like the perfect fit for us. So I'm going with do job as badly as I initially wanted it to be Shayna, just because I thought it'd be cool if they actually took this seriously. But obviously with the short one, two minute matches, that wasn't even a, a thought to begin with. So here we are. Mm-hmm. No, I, I actually have not felt great about the way WWE has presented this tournament as a whole for the women. Um, and, and I'm, I'm cool with them having a queen's crown, IE queen of the ring tournament. I think it's great. But the thing that I don't like is that they did it, but then didn't execute it in a way with that, that would show respect to the women. What I mean by that is like they had most of these matches, most of the matches from the semifinals or, or the qualifiers not the qualifiers, but um, from the first round all the way till now, they have made most of the matches like one, two minutes long. I mean, Roman Reigns' entrances most weeks have been longer than oh, yeah. the, 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 uh, the the matches combined. I mean, it has been really, I think, kind of disrespectful. He's the way not that even off the ramp before yeah. their match is over with. Yeah. I mean, seriously, it, it's it's been so – to me, that's a really disrespectful piece of what WWE – the way they presented it. Um, and we're supposed to believe that this is some kind of prestigious uh, crown and all that and – like to some degree, it's going to be it's going to be cool to see a woman, you know, win the the inaugural Queen's crown. But they've really executed it poorly in a way that's like, hey, yeah, we're doing this. So we make the women on equal footing with the men, but we're not going to execute it in a way that actually shows that we have weight behind it. Like we're doing it for optics. We're not doing it uh, to actually show you that we have th- that the women are on the same level. Like I just, I don't know. I-, I haven't felt great about the way that they've, they've gone about it, uh, particularly with just, just with the length of matches for almost all of them. Um, but that said, who, I, who do I think is going to win? I'm actually going to go with Selena Vega on this one because um, do drop. I-, I think that she's, I don't think she's right now anyway, that she's got the support behind her that maybe WWE thinks that she does. The fans are, are, are you know, they're, they're receptive to her and they cheer her. But I think that Zelina Vega would be a, to me, a more entertaining queen because I think she would take it more seriously than new drops. Do drop would be, she'd be kind of floating around dancing and having a good time. And that's fine. But I don't think that what, what is she going to do with that crown? Like, I mean, there's only so many weeks she can come around and, and play pretend with her, her crown and her scepter. I mean, so I think that uh, Zelina Vega being that vicious kind of uh, maleficent type of character that she could really just go, go into an evil mode of, uh, of being like a, a, an evil ruler or whatever. I mean, I, I'm a big Zelina Vega fan. I, to me, that's also yeah. part of it. Like I want Zelina to get some kind of push, even if it's not the championship right now. So to me, Zelina would be, a better fit because I think Zelina who's been there longer needs this push more than Dewdrop, Who's got more time in front of her than Zelina Vega does. So I want Zelina Vega to win. And I also think she has the edge here. I don't know how she's going to win given that the size difference is really crazy between these two. I mean, I, I don't know what kind of match we're going to get. I, I would suspect it's good. You know, it, it could be a disaster. And honestly, it could be. But I don't think it will be. I think it'll be OK. I think it'll be the match will be probably five minutes long, six minutes at best. Um, I really don't expect a long match with these two, but it'll probably be an OK match. Do you expect quality wise? Are you concerned? <sighs> yes. Yes and no. Like I honestly don't think it's going to be that bad. I don't think it's going to be long. I think both of their respective entrances are going to be longer than the, the match itself because you know they have that long ramp and they'll take forever to get there. So I don't I don't think it's going to be a long match at all. But I I don't think it's going to be that bad. You know, like I said, Do Drop is is very solid in the ring, so she can definitely handle her, her portion. And she's been in the ring with with women the size of Zelina Vega before, so they. I don't think it's going to be as bad as, as people may expect it to be. Um, I don't think it's going to be like, you know, match of the year candidate mm-hmm. or anything like that. But I, I think it's going to be, you know, another good match. And and I could definitely, like you, you were saying there, I can definitely see Zelina pulling this out. Because like you said, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of hers also. Like, I thought she should have won Money in a Bank. But, you know, I this could be good for her. And I, I could see her, like, just her look. Like, I could totally see her with, like, the crown and the whole get up. So that could be cool, too. But I think it's it's... It'd be a matter of if they want the respect of like kings and queens to be like a heel or a face going forward, like on the shows. Cause this is, 
it's these shows always kind of throw you off too because it, it kind of gives you like that i mean ugh, this may be understanding it too much at this point but like in a house show feel where like it's just like a show where like you don't really expect much to happen on like you know like newsworthy wise um like title changes and stuff like that but so you kind of just expect like it to be like a feel good and like just like a fan favorite show so that's why those these kind of like are interesting too and and the more we start to have of them the more it's like okay well do you really need to make the, the crowd happy you know what i mean so it's 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 a weird a weird thing being over there for that respect too it is yeah no i i see what you mean um, and, and I, I could see, I honestly could see this match going both ways quality wise. Like I said, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be a five out of 10. It won't be embarrassing. It won't be awesome. It'll be, it'll, it'll be fine it is, is yeah. really what it'll be. It'll be, it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, like I just think like right now, Zelina Vega is in a position where they need to do something with her and she's in need of a character change other than just randomly teaming up with Carmella for no reason and losing match after match. I mean, up until this tournament, she won like one match upon her return to WWE after she was let go. So yeah. uh, this this yeah. to me is a, a good part, a good point for her to, to jump off into and nothing, nothing against Dewdrop, Piper Niven. Like I have nothing. You know nothing bad to say about her. I like her. Um, I, I like her promo style. I like her. I like her look. I think that her look is is an aid, while some people don't. And you clearly, Vince McMahon probably looks at it as a a negative, given the fact that he changed her name to Dewdrop and made her just this bubbly kind of laughable character, which is what he did with Otis. If you're seeing some uh, parallels here, it's clearly from the, the same source, which is Vince. Um, you know, I know Nia Jax is the same body type that she's taken more seriously. And I hope at some point do drop while she's fun that, you know, we, we don't just look at her as kind of the comedy relief or the, the, the joke of the women's division. And she, she is a force to be reckoned with. It's like, she is athletic in the ring for her size. And I, I'm looking forward to what she can do in the future. So, um, I just don't think it's her time. I don't think it's her time. I think Zelina Vega will probably cheat to win and that's fine. I mean, she's yeah. a heel. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, okay. King of the Ring finals. Here we go. Xavier Woods and Finn Balor. Uh, I have thoughts on this, but I'm going to take a breath. What do you think? <laughs> so, this is actually a hard choice. And I... Okay, so I don't I don't really watch, like, like the up, 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 down, down channel or anything like that, but... I know that Xavier Woods has been pushing for this for, I guess, years now, that he, he just wants to be king. And someone, I forget where I, I heard it, but someone had made a point that, and I didn't even realize it, but he's never held a singles championship in his WWE career. It's only been like a tag team championship, which is kind of interesting when you think about like his longevity there and like just, he's not even like a uni- like a, a universal, <laughs> a United States championship or anything like that. So that was just kind of interesting. So Part of me, and then when you look at Finn, right, like future Hall of Fame, right, at this point, right, like mm-hmm. it's he's stacked. His his resume is what it is, you know. Like he technically doesn't need anything else, and he's good. Now, granted, does he deserve it? And should he? Yeah, like he. Do I think he could be champion? Yeah, like you know, there's totally you know so much you could be doing with Finn, but that's you know a whole other story. But for this situation in itself. While I think, you know, they would love to play off of, oh, like, is he, you know, like his whole thing is like Prince, Finn Balor and all that crap. But I think I could see them wanting to play off of that and him being promoted to King or whatever. And I think either Corey Graves or someone had made a, a reference to that this past week on commentary or maybe it was last week. Um, but I just, man, like. And saying all that, and, like, I've never been, like, a huge, huge New Day fan. Like, they're really cool. And, like, you know, like, it is what it is. Like, I respect their hustle. And, like, you know, like, they're a, a monster. Like, they're just marketing, just everything behind them and just the hustle and all that good stuff. I kind of want to see Xavier win it. I kind of think it, it, it'd be cool for him. Like, for whatever reason, like, and I may have missed it if he explained where, why this means so much to him. But, you know, like, this dude, like, it means so much to him. He's been with the company for how long now? Like, and, you know, it's it's one of the things, like, do you, you know, does, does everyone, is it like a participation trophy equivalent type thing? Like, I don't I don't view it as that. I think it's this guy's been there for a while, and he, he deserves it, you know? Like, it's not like they really take this thing seriously anymore anyway, which is a travesty in and of itself. So I say give it to Xavier. He's perfect for the role when you think about it. Like, if you're not going to have a heel be the king, 
have someone ob- obnoxious like Xavier. So he'll come out there with his trombone and his crown and all that crap. So just let him take it and have fun. And he can finally claim that he's the king and be done with that. And then, you know, because what are you really going to do with Finn as the king? You know, like, I don't I don't picture a King Balor unless he's going to go like make a heel turn, which I don't really see the point in that right now because he's not like in like deeply involved with someone right now storyline wise so i say just give it to xavier let it be a feel good moment especially if you're gonna go to zelena rot with the queen side and just you know call it a night this is such an interesting match to me because this is the first time i can remember that the king of the ring in the, in the at least recent past that we've had two baby faces in the finals where it's yeah. not clear that a heel is going to win because this is a tournament just begging for a heel to win because of how it's been dealt with in the past that it's, you know, people playing pretend and everyone's their subjects and they're suddenly delusional that they're an actual king or queen. But in this case, uh, we have two baby faces and um, I think this one's actually fairly easy to predict and that's crazy, but I think Xavier wins and it's because not because I don't think Finn is capable of winning. And actually when you look at where he's been in the main event of, uh, the last pay-per-view with Roman Reigns and you know that he is a just a, a plug-in main eventer this guy is a future hall of famer it's not that but rather a storyline that i think is going to start with Xavier here at King of the Ring um th- this i believe and this is this is again probably not going to happen but i want to go out on a limb cuz it's fun and say that this is the start of a heel turn for Xavier and what I think is going to happen is Xavier wins. Now, how he wins is going to be interesting to me because if he flat out just pins Finn Balor like with no help and it's just a flat, clean win, that'll be really shocking to me because of how yeah, they're sure. how the pecking order of these two. I mean, you have Xavier on this end and Finn Balor all the way over here. I mean, like it's in terms of how they've been presented, the believability of of uh, Xavier beating Finn clean is really not exactly high. So it could be by hook or crook. Uh, I don't think Xavier is going to cheat to win. Perhaps somebody could come in and screw over Finn Balor starting a program with him on the side. So that's, I, I think, possible. Um, but right now, I think Xavier wins I, I, maybe by maybe by a distraction from Kofi Kingston or something. And we have Xavier win. And for a little while, I think he'll come out and do exactly what you said. Just just being a complete jokester. Everybody knows how I feel about New Day, especially Xavier Woods in New Day and, and Kofi. It's it's not my favorite at all. It's, it's actually just cringeworthy the way they've acted the last six years. But he's going to come out and do his ridiculousness and make as many puns as he can and inside jokes as he can and breaking the fourth wall as he can. And uh, it'll be intolerable for a while. But, but and, uh, now again, that's my opinion. I think that you're going to have Xavier maybe start to believe and, and start to believe in his own hype and where, you know, you start to see seeds being planted of Xavier getting a temper with Kofi backstage. Uh, there's a moment of that. And then it just starts to slowly evolve into Xavier uh, getting fed up with being the the second fiddle or the third fiddle of the new day and the forgotten son, so to speak, of the new day. And he finally gets some attention on himself and you know it's time for me to shine you know you guys have both had your time and, and i just that's the role i want to see for xavier I'm, I'm over this just six year run or seven year run whatever the hell it's been of just the constant pancakes although they've they've backed off on the pancakes but just the the trombone i i i, I can't stand that stuff so i'm ready for an xavier heel turn and if this is the start of the story for that yeah sign me up You're listening to the WWE Podcast. We'll be right back after this short break. When the Universe Speaks, Pod Show drops episodes almost every Friday. Join your hosts, Mojo, The Big Gringo, and Rooster Boy for a beer review, a meme of the week, voicemails from the weirdos, and your live calls. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share their content on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and every social media platform, of course. You can, of course, hear them on any podcast providers such as Apple, Spotify, Google, and you can even get stickers, T-shirts, hoodies, koozies simply by clicking the links in the description of their show on YouTube or by shooting the guys a message. So when the universe speaks, 
just listen. Go to youtube.com slash universe speaks. So don't wait. Go give these three Navy vets some support by subscribing to them on YouTube or any podcast platform. It is a really entertaining show. Again, that's youtube.com slash universe speaks. And you can find them on Apple Podcasts and any other podcast app at when the universe speaks. So if you guys don't know who Austin Cook is, He's a national U.S. champion in judo. He is a U.S. Open champion, a World Cup medalist, and he just launched his own YouTube channel. It's called Bad Boy Medicine. And right now there's a promo video up there. It's only a minute long and it's already got over 10,000 views. And there's going to be a lot more content coming. For example, he is going to be interviewing UFC champion Marilo Bustamante. So that's going to be going on the YouTube channel. Of course, on Instagram, you can also follow him at Bad Boy Medicine. Go check out the promo video as well. This is this is the YouTube channel that's going to grow very quickly, guys. Again, it's Bad Boy Medicine. So if you love combat sports and performance medicine, you're not going to want to miss this. So subscribe right now to Bad Boy Medicine. Welcome back to the WWE Podcast. Let's get back to more great wrestling audio. Oh, yeah, I would I would definitely be here for it. And that, that would be something that could be a slow burn, and it could be a, a fun one-on-one match with Cook and Xavier at WrestleMania. You know, have them have a nice blow off match there and have it, it lead to there. If you don't want it to go that that long, maybe like a Royal Rumble or something, you know, fun. And that's pretty, you know, like pay-per-view wise, you know, an upper grade level. And then while you have Big E over there, you know, whether or not he's still champion at that time, but he's doing his own thing and then have them kind of, you know, doing their own thing. And then they can either have Big E, you know, interact with them to try to, you know, be the peacemaker. And then there's just so many different things that you can do with that going forward. So that would be definitely be fun. So, but it's a a matter of does WWE want to actually break them up and are they committed to doing that? You know, because they did the whole split with the New Day and then they turned around and brought them right back all three together. Um, Green and Kofi and Xavier back now are on um, SmackDown. So they are separated again, but you know, it's just, I feel like a matter of time almost. So if they stick with it, I'd love to see that. But part of me just is, doesn't think that they're actually going to pull the trigger on it, but dude, I'd love to see it. Yeah, that's I think you could totally yeah. do it too. Uh, easily. And at this point, if WWE feels they haven't gotten all the juice out of the squeeze of the new day for six or seven years, like, I mean, I, I don't know what the merchandise sales are. Only they do, but unless they are through the roof, I would argue strongly against them staying together anymore. I mean, Xavier has proven he's a singles competitor. He had a great match with Bobby Lashley inside Helen a cell on Monday Night Raw a number of months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's shown he can be a main event uh, talent inside the ring. And I think it's time that he just starts to get that push and just get him out of the new day, just funk that he's been in. It's just, they've been the same guys for the last seven years. Like, I think it's time to move on. I mean, we need to tell, you know, big E that as well. That's another topic, but yeah, this, this is a, uh, th- this is to me is Xavier's time. And I'll be, I'll be really disappointed if it's just him, you know, he wins and then he's just joking about being a King and making you know, a thousand different ways to pun the word King and, you know, whatever royalty for the next like two months. Like I'll be really disappointed if that is really the goal is to make him an even more of a comedy segment of winning the King of the ring and bragging about it and all that. It just, that will be the worst part of this. Like if you're going to make this tournament, have some kind of big payoff for it, make it mean something other than just a, a it, make it just like a comedy uh, bit like it, that'll be really disappointing if the payoff the whole thing is just make Xavier more funny like that okay. that's a terrible way to end the tournament if that's the only goal but I, I hope I'm wrong and I hope it's the heel turn so we'll see okay uh, moving up the ladder here into the raw tag team championship RK bro versus AJ Styles and again take your pick on pronunciation Omos Omos <laughs> because WWE doesn't know themselves I've heard no. Corey Graves pronounce it differently. I've heard AJ Styles pronounce it differently on the same show. Jimmy Smith pronounces it differently. So take your pick. I'm going to say uh, Omos because whatever. Uh, I'm as right as anybody else, apparently. Maybe Omos should clear this up. But anyway, right. um, I, here I'm really looking forward to this match. 
like really looking forward to this match. This, this may be the, the a tag team match that I've been looking forward to the most out of any tag team match in the last few years. And not just because all three guys or all four guys rather can really go in the ring. And I even includes Omas who plays his role very well. I don't mean that he's on the same level physically and athletically as the other three, but he plays his role very well. And, and, and that team right now is very over. Um, I'm looking forward to this for a number of reasons. Number one is how does Omos, how do they, how do they book him in this match? Does he finally take a finish? I don't mean get pinned. I mean, just take a finish. Maybe the RKO. How does he react to it? Does he sell it like the fiend and just get right back up? You know, how does that work? Um, the, the chemistry between AJ and Randy is excellent. The chemistry between Riddle and AJ is excellent. Really, the chemistry between AJ and Pick Your Wrestler is excellent. Um, so, quality wise, I expect nothing but like A, B plus to A minus or, or higher quality of match, uh, given that they have hopefully like 15 minutes or so. Um, I, I do think, though, this is, this is really tough. I still think RK Bro will retain because perhaps WWE is ready to let Omos go his own way. If that, if they lose, maybe that'll be the final straw and they decide to break this team up and let AJ finally go off on his own and do his own thing. I have my doubts. I have my doubts. Um, given that RK bro really has only one team that is of their caliber to work with, which is why they're continuing to work with them. I mean, the next team down is what the Viking Raiders, you know, I, I, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not great. Yeah. So, um, I think this is going to be a really good match. Omos is the X factor here. Everything they do seems to be built around this guy. Uh, Riddle's always fun with Randy. I still think they retain in, in what's going to be, I think, a very entertaining match. What do you think? Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I think it's time. I think they're going to start, if if this isn't it, very soon, pl- planting the seeds or just going full throttle with breaking Omos and AJ Styles up. Because I just, I think, the singles division for the men men's division really needs fresh challengers for like the the championship picture because you have Big E who is he really going to face going forward you know like you need to start building challenges for him regardless of how long you're going to keep him as a champion you, you need to start building you know people to be champions so I think they've kind of run their course and it, it's been pretty good you know I give them credit they they lasted longer than I thought they were going to they they did much better as a team than I expected. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see AJ and almost winning this. Um, like you said that they, they, it wouldn't shock me if they did though, just because the tag division is so depleted, especially on raw. So it's kind of like if, if they don't win, like you said, like who do they go to? I, I guess it would be the Viking Raiders and they just made their appearance on raw, you know, like confronting Morrison. Um, yeah, it's just I don't. And, and by the way, it's just so funny that like yoga is apparently like, like this foreign thing in WWE. Like I don't know, it's just <laughs> it's just or meditation. It's just I don't know, just just funny that like no one seems to know what John Morrison is doing back there, or it's just like this bizarre thing. <laughs> but yeah, so I like you said, I, I think Randy and Riddle are going to retain here. There, there's still a lot left to to get out of this team. Um, and I don't I don't think you want to have them lose. At Crown Jewel, I think if if and when they they do lose, you wanted to be here in the stage or you know like a, a, maybe on this side of the world and and just have it where it can get a bigger reception, more emotional and reception to it for you know for that matter, um, and just have it mean more. So yeah, I, I think Riddle and and Orton retain here. Yeah, I, I think they do too. I mean, again, the case to be made for them to lose would be okay. They want to. They still need to have Omos sit under the learning tree of AJ Styles. I don't mean that in a storyline way. I mean that in like real life that he, they, they still want AJ to be kind of the mentor for Omos. Yeah. Well, he can be a bodyguard, you know, know? like he can be AJ's bodyguard. Like they don't have to turn on each other. They can just re refocus their attentions on having AJ be champion and have, you know, kind of like a Shawn Michaels, Kevin Ash diesel type thing. Like have just Omos there still there with AJ and have the, you know, the occasional tag match, especially when they're doing like their live shows and stuff like that. Like still have Omos there, but you know, have AJ doing his thing, but have them still together. If, if you need it, you know, it's just, yeah. you don't have to, this can be one of the rare times they don't actually turn on each other. Which I mean, I'm I, I'm fine with that. I I actually don't know if I want to see AJ versus Omos right now, um, because their their chemistry is really good. But I mean, AJ is a heel 
he, the thing is AJ can play any role. I mean, AJ is a baby yeah. face and a heel. It's equally good. And that, th- that is a rare thing to have as a talent. Usually you're, you skew one way or the other. AJ is great as, at both. Um, but the thing, the only thing I would say to that, why I think that's a good analogy with like Kevin Nash as the kind of the, the bodyguard for uh, Shawn Michaels I, I just the way that WWE has been what they've been showing me over the last several months with Omos, they don't view him as a secondary guy. They view him as a main event guy eventually. And to have him be the bodyguard of AJ, I think WWE would look at that as a demotion. Um, even if AJ is champion, Omos is still in the shadow of AJ, so to speak, in their mind. I think that they are looking to him to eventually have that big moment with Brock Lesnar or, you know, Commander Aziz. I don't know. I mean, so like they view him as a main eventer and um i don't think that they think omas is just that guy that's going to be you know the uh, basically the the doorman for raw underground right like i mean yeah. he's come yeah. he's come a long way from being the bouncer at the door uh and so th- that's why i don't think it'll happen but it, honestly when you look at the draft i'm looking at it now just to make sure i didn't miss another team they do have the street profits who have been drafted to raw so they do have that i mean the street profits are probably the biggest tag team on raw outside of RK bro. So True, I don't yeah. know. And that'd be fun. Yeah. RK bro and uh street profits. Yeah. No, that, that would be a fun rivalry. I mean, there's no heel there, but uh, yeah, that, that's fine with me. I mean, the tag team division on, on every front on the men's and women's side is so thin, <laughs> especially the, the women's side doesn't even exist. They don't even have a tag team division right now. Yeah, it doesn't at, at all. Like, I mean, we have Shane or Shane Bizzer. Uh, we have uh, Nikki, and Rhea going unopposed in the tag team division because there isn't one. It's it's absolutely insane. Just just dissolve them. I mean, I don't know. That, that's a whole other topic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Um, so just to be clear, we're both going with RK Bro on this one to, yes. win, to retain. Okay. Let's get to – here we go. Seth Rollins versus Edge. Hell in a cell. Boy, this – this one's tough, at least in my mind. But what do you think, Ashley? Yeah, man, this one is tough because it's one of those things where it's like, does Seth need to win more than Edge? And it, like, you think of since Edge has returned, like his win and loss record, and like, does that even matter with someone like Edge and who he is and all that, everything, you know, like his legendary status? Does that even really matter? But I think it kind of does get to a point where, you know, like you don't want him losing all the time or losing all the big matches. Like you want to see him win one, especially when it's not for the title, right? So is this it? Since he came up with the match, like is this his time to to win the blow off feud and then do whatever he's going to do after that? But I, I think I'm going to I'm going to go with Seth on this one. I think Seth needs this a little bit more, especially with his history in Hell in a Cell matches. I think he needs to pull. He needs to have a good showing in this. And and I think they. I think this is going to be an excellent match. Like I think this is like we were mentioning earlier. Like the brutality is going to be just out there with this. And I know for for that, I think that's why Seth needs to win. I think Seth needs to go to that that dark place and just beat edge and whatever that means for edge if he goes away for a little bit you know and then comes back again um or what have you but i think if seth loses what does that mean for him you know like he he is going to be on raw now so i think he would be a fun opponent for like a big e so you you don't want to beat down seth you know like you don't want to have him lose to edge and in this this big of a story because this has been up there as well you know like everyone talks about Brock and Roman as they should, but this has been a very good and drawn out story that's been told over the past few months now. So I think as much as I'd love to see Edge win this, because I'm obviously a, a big Edge fan, I think I'm going with Seth. Yeah, look, this I look at this match and I say not only who needs it more, but looking forward, who can benefit long term the most from this and who's going to be here more often? The answer is Seth. The answer is Seth Rollins. And again, you're right. The Edge can only take so many losses before it's like, all right, this is getting a little much. Like Edge has lost many more matches since he returned than he's won. And I understand that. Even if, even though he's a Hall of Fame talent, he is in the give back portion of his career. He knows that he's not here to make himself, but rather help new talent uh, on top of vindicating himself and ending the career he wants to end, the way he wants to end it. But 
Seth right now, I think, could benefit more because if he wins, he can go off on just this this just tirade about bragging about beating Edge and how you know he's one of the most sadistic men in WWE and he has no mercy for anybody and like he could really build off this. Whereas if Edge wins, it'll be cool for Edge to win for a nostalgic feel. And I love Edge. I mean, he's one of my favorites of all time. But if he wins, I think that damages Seth more than it helps Edge. And the the reason is that they've done such a great job building up Seth. And Seth has done such a great job building up Seth that if he loses this blow off, I think it's going to take a lot of the steam out of his words away and out of him being a believable, credible heel out of um, out of his sales, so to speak. So I think Edge needs or Ed doesn't need it as much as Seth. And I think Edge will be not as beneficial as Seth would be winning it. And it would hurt Seth a lot more than Edge losing, who if Edge loses, yeah, I'd be like, OK, yeah, that sucks to have him come back and lose so much. But Edge is such good, so good on the mic that he can talk you right back into believing him like that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, exactly. Edge is so, so good on the microphone. It's just stupid. It's unfair how good he is. And saying that he's going to scar the soul of Seth Rollins. That was that was a really cool visual that he put in our brains. Yeah. Like, what does that look like? Like, what what does a soul being scarred look like? I mean, it's um, just so masterfully done by, by uh, Edge. And he had another level of intensity that was yelling and screaming, but there was, like, anger in his voice. It was just... It, it was so, so good. Their promos, both of them, knocked it out of the park on Friday night on SmackDown. And uh, so I think Seth wins simply because he needs it more. He is more of the future than Edge is. Um, you know, Edge has more victories in his future. I just don't think it's going to be this one. If he wins, I'll, I'll be fine with it, but I'll also be a little bit concerned for Seth. Um, yeah, you know, definitely. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, brutality probably with some thumbtacks or two. Uh, you know, maybe they'll find a way out of the cell. Like sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But yeah, this is going to be one of those matches that you go. Oh, the, the crowd's going to be going, oh, like yeah, concerned for the health and safety of these two individuals. That's it's going to be that kind of match. So I agree. All right, let's move on. Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg. <laughs> uh, no disqualification. <laughs> I'll take this one first. Um, I, this actually, outcome wise, is it's actually a little difficult uh, because Goldberg has already lost technically to Bobby Lashley, but Goldberg is, I think, overstayed his welcome by many many years at this point. I actually think, hmm, I think Goldberg's gonna win this. But I think Bobby will quickly get his heat back by beating down Goldberg in front of his son, maybe. Um, because I think they want the mystique of Goldberg, whatever's left of the mystique of Goldberg, to still exist. Because I don't think Goldberg's done with uh, done with WWE matches. And Lashley said he wants to mm-hmm. end the career of Goldberg. Whereas Goldberg literally threatened the life of Lashley, which I really don't <laughs> like. I've been on a rant about that. It just makes no sense. It's the one thing you don't talk about. Well, one of many things. Like you don't talk about death, politics, or um, like oh, I forget the other thing. But you, you, there's just certain like no nos. And Goldberg not only doubled down, he tripled down on saying he's going to kill Bobby Lashley. Like, you're not going to deliver <laughs> yeah, on that. Like it's not a big deal. You, yeah, like, go, go ahead. No, no, no. I don't mean to cut you off, but he's just making these comments like he's going to kill Gold or he's going to kill Lashley for what he did to his son, and he's only going to be happy if, if Bobby's dead. It's like, dude, like what? Like it doesn't. It's not even logical. Like, I mean, I totally get it. Like, if someone hurt my family, you know, like I'd want to, you know, seek retribution. Sorry, retribution on them as well. But like, first of all, dude, like it was your son's fault. Like, yeah, no one's so even talking about that. Be, you yeah. can't, right. You can't be but so mad. Okay. So yes, I would be mad that Bobby didn't stop. Like you can say something for that. Like, okay. Like, but it, you know, like at the end of the day, it was Gage's fault. <laughs> like it is what it is. So I get like some parents may just want to be blind to the fact like, oh, well, you know, I still have to defend my son or whatever. But like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, I would stand up for my kid. But like, if I saw he did something wrong, I'd be like, yeah, dude, like, first of all, you shouldn't have jumped the barricade, gotten into the ring and then attacked a dude who's like five times your size. Like, come on, man. Like, you're lucky. Like, it stopped. (laughs) Like, 
you know, like it's just it is what it is. So it's just I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but no. it's just like it's it's laughable. Like that's what takes me out of it. Like if he wouldn't have said comments like that. And he would have just, you know, like said whatever other Goldberg sayings, you know, like, you know, then fine. Like a, a good grudge match. Cool. But the second you said, well, I'm going to kill Lash. That's like, OK, well, you're not. So mm-hmm. there's that, you know, yeah. or if you, and if you do, then you'll be in jail. So then there's that, too. So yeah. then like, come on. It's, what am I supposed to believe here? It's preposterous that you're going to. That, that's the one thing that you don't talk about because, you know, 100 percent you're not going to deliver on that, especially as a baby face. You can't say that because the fans go, yeah, well, Goldberg, listen, that's not happening. Like we all know that ain't happening. So yeah. stop. And the thing is, it's not like he's even using it as a, a figure of speech or some kind of metaphor. He's going to kill him. He actually no, he, he, he he's saying, no, I'm going to beat you within an, beat you within an inch of your life and then I'm going to finish the job. Like that, you are actually saying you're going to commit murder on national television, on international television. You're going to do that. Like, and Goldberg, or, 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 or rather, uh, Bobby Lashley at least made sense and said, you know, that's like, you're, I could uh, pro- uh, charge you right now. Like, this is criminal. And it's true. You, you can't threaten the life of somebody like that. I mean, you can actually be uh, put in jail. Like, you, you can't do that. And uh, so it makes no sense why they went this road. It almost seems as if it's desperation to get attention to this program, which is really what it smells like is desperation. And uh, to me, I think Goldberg wins so that that way the babyface wins. They can end the program. But Bobby Lashley gets his heat back by just trying to injure Goldberg. And then Goldberg goes away for a while based on that injury of Goldberg uh, that he suffered at the hands of Lashley after the match. Um, And I'd also love to see Gage just like get uh, like just completely demolished by Bobby Lashley. Like I want to see him get speared by Bobby Lashley in front of Goldberg, who's handcuffed to the rope. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see after he's beaten down Goldberg's half conscious and he spears his son intentionally in front of his dad. That's what I want. That's how, that's how sick I am. And that's what I, as a father (laughs) too, I want to see that, uh, you you know, you threaten my life. Here's what I'm going to do to yours. Right? Like, so I don't know. This is so weird. I don't expect this match to last more than like seven, eight minutes tops under 10 for sure. And uh, that which sucks because Bobby Lashley is so good. But yeah, well, and it, it, cause this is a no holds barred match. So this is, this could go long. This obviously isn't going to be a, a short, regular short Goldberg match. Right. So like you said, I think this goes at least like nine, 10 minutes. And I think it's going to be interesting to see cause you can't, it's, Normally with matches like this, like they try to like venture out into the arena and do stuff like that. But I highly doubt they're going to go across the barricade (laughs) and, you know, fight in front of y'all, you know, all those fellas out there. So it's going to be an interesting type of no holds bar match, too. Like, is it just going to be a mild version? Are they going to try to, you know, like fight up the ramp or, you know, like or are they just if it's not even going to be that big of a deal and they're just going to hit each other with like of course like kendo sticks and like maybe like a table or something like that but i think that part of me like do you do you think gage is actually going to be there do you think he's going to bring him to saudi arabia like because he's he's mentioned like gage being there but like i don't know if that's I, like a real I thing hope not. unless he's there to just get beat up by bobby i hope not i, I mean i just just let's let's just just end this Nobody wants Bobby Lashley in this program with Goldberg, uh, at least not anybody in my knowledge. It'll be interesting to hear how the crowd reacts in Saudi Arabia to Goldberg. I, <laughs> you know, I, I, people that may not know a whole lot about his history, um, that may not have been fans when Goldberg was around and hot in the late 90s. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, honestly, I said this on my show last night that whatever reaction anyone gets in Saudi Arabia, I'm throwing it out the window. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. count this because – it's not a typical reaction or, or, or the typical fan base that is reacting to their product. It's this once a year crowd that you never know what the hell they're going to do other than cheer Mansoor. Like I, I'm honestly throwing and tossing everything out the window. No one's traveling from the United States to Saudi Arabia. Like, very few, if any, people are going there from well, and the that's United what's States. Amazing so. with, with right now, especially like with the yeah. pandemic, that they're even able to. Like, I was shocked when they first announced that they were having the show this year because I was just certain that, you know, with the pandemic and travel restrictions, like, it wasn't going to be a thing. But I don't, you know, I mean, obviously, I know restrictions have eased and stuff like that, but I, I'm just... It's not like a quick trip. It's not even to like Canada or, you know, anything like that. That's not terribly far. They're going, what is it, like 17 hours away, like cross country. It's just like, I mean, cross country, cross the world. It's it's just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just shocked that they were able to do it like the that, like 
for like guidelines and like provisions and all that crap wise like they were even able to so money 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 will will make people do things yep um it's all about the private jets and all that good stuff that's right that's right so uh anyway yeah the gauge please i I mean just don't show up i i mean it's uh (laughs) if i was gold or if i was bobby lashley i would have just said hey look like you know uh if your son is that dumb to get into the ring with a guy like me when he's you know a tenth of my size then that's more of a reflection on you as a father that you would raise a son that's stupid i mean like there's so many things they could have done (laughs) i mean like really and they just went with the the narrative oh well he he attacked my son well your son was a dumbass who got in the ring when he had no re- no uh, purpose in there, no business in there, to attack a guy who's 50 times his strength and speed, what do you think he's going to do from for, with that? I mean, and again, oh, he's he, yeah, but he's so much smaller. Yeah, but how do you know he doesn't have a weapon? Like, you want to start talking about real stuff? How do you know that? Well, you know, and that's the yeah. point. Like, God. that's the point with him being so much smaller. You, you, you physically know, like, when Bobby, okay, like, let's say Bobby truly didn't know who he was, right? When, and Bobby has, I'm like, he can feel that he's not the average size of a wrestler. So if you were expecting a wrestler to be coming in and, and there to save Goldberg, like uh, dude's much smaller. So it's obviously not a, a wrestler. So it's like a, even more of a reason, like I don't, there's just, I mean, obviously we're, we're going way too far know, into this that, that they care, but it's just like, there's just so many things. Cause like Goldberg being a wrestler, he would know no one jumps the barricade. And if you do, like you get what you get, dude, like, yep. you know, you get exactly it's just, what you deserve. I yep. don't know. It's oh, not even that God. big of a deal. <laughs> no, but it's just, but they drilled it into our head that it, you yeah. know, we're supposed to hate Lashley for this. I'm like, he didn't just pull him out of a, a crowd. Like I could see if he was cheering for his dad at ringside, and you know, do what Brock Lesnar did to Dominic, which actually was hilarious in front of Rey Mysterio. <laughs> like I, that, yes. that was so much fun to see oh. uh, Dominic get destroyed by Brock. It, it wasn't like that. I mean, it's not like he wasn't unprovoked. He was physically provoked. It's self defense. He got what he deserved, and I actually would argue he should have gotten more. So anyway, yeah. all right, I'm, I'm just kidding. Fine. So yes, and fine. Thing. Yeah, yeah. You're not a, a performer. You you don't belong there. You should be banned. And anyway, let's let's move on. Yeah. Uh, all right. Big E versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. Ashley, boy, oh boy. If there's one match to pick that has just one thousand percent predictability on it, this is I think this one. But maybe you have other thoughts. Yeah. No. This is Big E all day. He um. Yeah, it's it's pretty cut and dry. Like they just needed a opponent for Big E, and Drew's there. You know, it's it's everything happening right before the draft or right before the season premiere, I should say. So you know, it, I'm sure it, again, it's going to be a pretty good and fun match. Obviously, they can't get along, you know, if they're if they're a tag team, but they still respect each other when they're fighting against each other one on one. So it's it's a, a weird dynamic there, but. I think it's going to be a cool match. You know, it is what it is. I'll be interested to see if uh, Drew brings out the sword um, to Crown Jewel or if that stays backstage or it doesn't even make the flight to begin with. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think it'd be solid, what, maybe 15, 18 minute match. But I think Biggie wins this as he should and moves on to whomever after. And, and, you know, like, not for nothing, like, it is, I am kind of excited to see, like, <laughs> the season premieres. Of of Raw and SmackDown, the you know next week coming up after Crown Jewel to see like how the the draft actually shakes off because I think it'd be cool to see who Biggie like actually like goes into like a story with being the champion. So obviously, yeah, I, I'm picking Biggie here, but I would be shocked on honestly if Drew won. Well, don't forget Survivor Series is next, so that's a throwaway uh, exhibition pay per view. The one time a year. Yeah, I, I, I know. Like I said, except for Rumble, Mania, King of the Ring tournaments, random times that happens to no explanation, super shows. Yeah, except all that. Yeah, no problem. It's uh, it's yeah. just once a year. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think. I mean, if you're going to ask me that, I think it's probably Big E and Seth Rollins is probably the next big program for him. That's my guess, but uh, all right. Who do I think is going to win this? I mean, it's not even it's not even close. This is the, as predictable as it gets. It's Biggie who wins. Now, does he win clean? Does he win with help? I think no. I think he flat out just beats Drew, and they try to really cement Biggie <laughs> as a legitimate champion. And Drew goes to SmackDown and slowly starts his program with Roman Reigns potentially. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Well, you know, uh, there's lots of different scenarios there, but. Big E wins. There's really not much more to say about this. I don't think Drew's turning heel, even if it's a bad, you know, people have been saying, oh, well, he'll, he'll lose and then pretend to shake his hand and claim more. I'm, I'm like, no, they don't want Drew turning heel going to SmackDown with the mega heel of of, uh, of Roman Reigns. You got to have yeah. a baby face to balance it. And Drew is that baby face. So I think that 
in a loss, Drew will still be a good sport. They'll shake hands and hug. Although the relationship has been very bizarre over the last few weeks where they act like great friends. They've got secret handshakes that they do backstage. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're laughing and joking. And then the next thing you know, they're like, shoving each other in the ring for no re- no reason not not provoked and you know drew claymore's biggie and then biggie almost uh attacked drew this week they've got such a bizarre on camera relationship i can't figure it out but i think drew or uh, yeah drew takes the pinfall here with the worst finish of all time with the big ending and uh biggie retains i mean there's really not much more to say about it i think it'll be a fine match that's really it yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, last two matches here. We've got – that's what I want to talk about. The women's here. Here we go. The women's match because, guys, they can now uh, they can now perform in front of an audience. They can perform hopefully in their normal ring attire, but if they're wearing, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like shower curtains, then, you know, it's not going to be unexpected. So the SmackDown Women's Championship, here we go. Triple threat, Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks. Ashley, who wins this? This one is actually really hard. Like, I don't... And it's honestly kind of confusing to me because I don't know why exactly it's just the SmackDown Women's Championship. Like, the whole... And this is... Another reason why I like the whole timing of the draft is so confusing, like in how they do it, because it's just like it doesn't. I don't know, it, it it's just kind of been a mess to me. And maybe I'm just like missing. Like I think I may have missed a show and I just missed like a, a chunk of of information somewhere. But I don't know. Because and like I, I truly don't know because Bianca and Becky are going to be on Raw, and Sasha is going to be on SmackDown, right? After the draft, like after Crown Jewel. Yes, so Charlotte goes to SmackDown, Bianca and Becky are on Raw. Yeah, and Sasha stays on SmackDown and Sasha stays as on well. SmackDown. Yeah, so you would think Sasha would win since she's staying on SmackDown and Becky and Bianca are going to be on Raw, but then we still have Charlotte with the Raw Women's Championship on SmackDown, so I don't... It's just it's, it's one of those such a mess. I need to write it down so yeah. I can process everything and then kind of like maybe draw arrows to see who, who's going to end up. It, it's just it's one of those things that just shouldn't be this complicated, right? Like it should be in, in this. It's another reason with the draft, right? Like they need to have fundamental rules with the draft because, like, to where like maybe champions don't get drafted or I, it's just there's something to prevent this cluster because. Um, I've like part of me is like, well, logic and common sense would tell you Sasha would win since she's going to remain on SmackDown. And then maybe they'll have like an impromptu match with Charlotte and either Charlotte and Becky or maybe a triple throw with Charlotte, Becky and Bianca and have either Becky and Bianca win to beat Charlotte. So that gets the Raw championship off of Charlotte. But then it makes me think that back to what was it last year when the I think it was the New Day and Street the Street Profits. Yeah, yeah, they just swapped titles. Yep. Like that, there's no big deal. Yep, that's it. And that's the so, way it should be. That's why I'm sitting here like, damn, am I an idiot for putting all this thought into like, maybe they should do this. Sasha will win here. So they can do blah, blah, blah. And, and all right, they're just going to have Becky retain, you know, so she doesn't take a loss and then they'll just swap the titles or it, I, man, it's just, it's one of those things where it kind of makes me conflicted as a fan because like, I really want to care. Like I'm really wanting to put like all this energy and thought into like oh well this would totally make sense if, if Sasha wins because like I said Charlotte can lose to Becky or Bianca blah 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 and then I just kind of feel foolish because I'm like they probably don't even care they probably haven't even put this much thought into it so and, that's why I'm torn and, <laughs> you know I'm sorry go ahead no and they are counting on us as fans who they believe have you know a room temperature IQ to not go beneath the surface and just go, just take us at face value. Don't dig too deep. It's a championship match. Don't look at the possibilities and the implausibilities and, and things that just simply don't make sense that you're, that we're doing. Just right. look at it as it's a great, it's a great, uh, women's triple threat for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And whoever you like, that's who you should want to win. 
Like they are looking at this and just hoping that we don't dig beneath the surface. Unfortunately, it's really difficult to not dig beneath the surface because there's so many things that just don't make sense really as to even the lead up to this. Like why is Bianca getting a Raw Women's Championship match on Raw, number one? If she wins it, she's saying she's going to be a double champion. Well, how's that going to work if you're if you (laughs) – are on Raw with the SmackDown Women's Championship. It's a, it's a championship that's exclusive to the brand. So what are they going to do? If you're a double champion, are you going to be able to float? Can you not float? Do you have to give up a belt? They, they, they just they make this unnecessarily complicated. To And, and I know what they'd say. They're, they would say to me, you're making this complicated. And it's just to me, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm thinking about this in a logical storyline perspective from A to point B to point C. And I shouldn't have to overthink this. But as a fan, you want this to make sense. But they have competitors in here and scenarios that you're like, wait, 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 wait. How can you have brand exclusive paper, uh, brand exclusive uh, championships with star exclusive talent that maybe carry over the championship to a brand that they're not on? Like there's it's 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 insanity. Yeah. And, you know, first of all, my response, if, if they were to say, like, to me, for instance, like, oh, well, you're putting too much thought into this and you're not thinking the right way. Like, OK, well, explain to me what what, what was your, your thought process behind this? Yeah. When you looked at, OK, Crown Jewel, we're going to have this match and the story leading up to it is going to be this. Ex- explain to me, please, because I would love to see where I missed a segment or an interview or a match or something that laid all this out. And I can be like, damn, you know what? I am so wrong. I'm sorry. I I missed that. My bad. I would totally, I would love to see that, but it's just not there, dude. It's just, it's just not. And that's why it's so frustrating because like, it could be, this could be like so cool. This could be like a really monumental match. Like it could be like in, in all this story BS to this side, like these women are, and this isn't their fault. Like this isn't them at all. This is the creative that has, that they're forced to portray so this isn't the the, the talent themselves right because this match is I'm, I'm sure with the talent involved it's going to be amazing you know what i mean like these aren't slouches in the ring no, by any means no. like this is going to be an awesome match it's going to so, be that's so good so, yeah that's what's yeah. so frustrating it's like because you know like even the story didn't even have to be this complicated it could have been something so basic and then this it takes you all the way back to becky returning to begin with so it's just <laughs> It's yeah, just yeah. one of those things, it it is. and that and that, that's why it's frustrating to me. So I'm, I say all this, but I'm 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 going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. And as much as I could be wrong, since they just had Becky lose as well on SmackDown, um, I'm going to go with Sasha winning here. Whoa. I'm going to go with Sasha Banks winning the yeah winning the title. That gets the correct title on the correct show because it's easier to have because i don't as as much as and if i'm wrong about this i'm i'm really gonna be probably hurt to my to my core but i i think that for all their faults and is not that this makes this right by any means but i think that they view the women's respective singles titles I hate to say it, but more importantly, in in a higher regard than they do like the tag titles. So I don't see them just swapping them. I, I just I can't believe that they would they would do something like that. So I'm gonna say Becky loses here, and I think it'll be something like they hit their finishers, and Becky's gonna go for the pinfall, but then Sasha pushes her out of the way at the last second and kind of steals the victory that way. Um, so you, you still have kind of like a, a way out. Because since it's a triple threat as well, there's there's no rules, right? No DQ, so anything can really happen. Um, so yeah, so that that gets the SmackDown title back on Raw, and then I could see, like I said, Becky or Bianca like fighting Charlotte because they're gonna have to get the title off of Charlotte as well at some point. So I think they're gonna have another match either on Raw or, or I guess it would have to be Raw because I don't think there's another show until uh, Survivor Series, which is until next month. Which I'm not even sure the exact date of that, but yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, man. I like <laughs> I said, this is probably another one we've we've put more thought and time into than than they really have. But and I could be completely wrong. <laughs> it could be a quick and, just and, Becky retains and they move on in, in five minutes. <laughs> but and that, I hope they do it. No, yeah. no, and, and that in of itself, what you just said that we put more thought into it than they have. That in of itself is the problem. 
Like they haven't mm-hmm. gone this deep or cared to go this deep or think it's not worth going this deep to make sure this makes sense. And that's why they would project on us that we're thinking too much. You're, you just enjoy the product. You're, you're ruining it for yourself. You're th- overthinking it. No, us overthinking it, us getting frustrated with the, the logic being not, not, not even a factor here is a reflection on you not doing your job. That's exactly what this is, is WWE and creative and Vince who are just not willing to put the effort in to make sure the draft is clean. It makes sense. There are rules that are adhered by instead just making this mishmash of talent this way. Yeah. You would think like it's harder to to be this convoluted than it would be to just be like, all right, a, B and C like, yep. It's just, I don't know, dude. I don't mean to cut you off, but I just but, feel like oh, it's no. just like it gives you a, a it kind of makes you stressed out in a way to yeah, think like how, right. yeah, how, yeah. how jumbled this is when it can really be so simple. Because it makes like, you feel stupid. Me. Like it makes yeah. you like, wait, well, wait, am I missing something? Like, why <laughs> like, are they here? Did they explain exactly. why this person's here? But instead, they want to have their cake and eat it too, where, where they want all the talent on the show, even though it's the season premiere of SmackDown last week or whatever, which makes no sense because they told us the season premiere is after, um, after the uh, Crown through pay-per-view but that's neither here nor there they uh just have talent on here for no reason who are challenging for championships that for the brand that they're not going to be on they're making this they want to be able to make the biggest match possible without adhering to any kind of logic and thinking that having the biggest match possible is the most important thing instead of making sure that it makes effing sense and that things are clean and easy to understand of, okay, if so-and-so wins, this is going to happen. If this person wins, this is going to happen. Instead, we're, we're still left to go, well, I don't know who to really root for here because I don't know how this is all going to pan out. Like, this is super confusing. And uh, you're right. Like, if Charlotte ends up on – well, she isn't ending up on SmackDown. I don't think she's going to lose the Raw Women's Championship anytime soon. Um, unless they do some kind of, like you said, uh, match after Crown Jewel. But then that would shoot – the uh, whole thing down that this is the season premiere. They just told us the brand draft, the drafts go into effect the day after crown jewels. So how are they going to have a match between Charlotte and say, I don't know, uh, Bianca, whoever's on, on raw to transfer the belt. And that would be the most predictable outcome of all time too. Like, Oh, well they're clearly having this to transfer the belt. So I, mm-hmm. I honestly think all that, <laughs> which said, is why Bianca should have won this past Monday on raw. Yeah. Well, she should have beat Charlotte to begin with because that would have <laughs> defeated this whole thing. Like yeah. it would have, it would act, that it actually just... would have solved things because then Bianca would have been she's drafted to Raw, she's the Raw Women's Champion, and then you could have had Sasha Banks, like you said, win. And there you go, problem solved. I was solved. blown away. I honestly, with not not to, I know this is, has nothing to do with Raw, but I was just honestly so they they got me. Like the the amount of time and the hype and the fact that it was the main event. Like I was like, oh wow, like, this is. And once I realized that it was actually getting into be like a pretty good match. I was like, oh wow, this they, Bianca's probably gonna win here. Like once I really started thinking about it, you know, like it would it would make sense. Like she's gonna be here, blah, blah, blah. Like in it's just I thought about it. I was like, yo, this this is actually very logical and it, it would be very co- a cool moment because you know, like it's like I said, the main event it'd be a good moment for Bianca, you know, like what a year she's had, you know, this is just another accolade to add to that. And it's just it ends with the DQ, man. And it's just like, you just feel stupid. And I, I literally felt stupid because I, I made it a point to stay awake to watch the end of it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to see this through because I was really looking forward to it. And you know what? They just like kind of slapped me in the face with that ending. And I get it, right? Like, you don't, they're trying to protect everyone. But it's like, you know, like, if wins and losses don't matter in one hand, then why do they in the other? So it's just frustrating. Uh, well, yeah, that that certainly is another topic too, is wins and losses. But, um, I, I, yeah, look, I think here's what's going to happen. After all that, I still haven't given my prediction. Uh, I do believe that Becky Lynch will retain, and I think it's going to be a straight title swap. Like, I mean, I, 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 that's what I believe. I, I know what you're thinking. I know, I know why Ugh. you don't think it's going to happen. But to me, that's because I think they'd want Charlotte as a, a champion on SmackDown and they can't have a raw women's champion who is a SmackDown star. So, uh, I mean, that's why I think it's going to be a straight title swap between Becky and Charlotte. And then they're going to go off just their like with- programs. They're just gonna like hand the titles over. I, I don't think it would like be that? like you know like they did it with the Street Profits and New Day. I think they'll they'll have some kind of ceremony or something. And and uh, I mean I don't know like oh, the, it, it, it they'll find a way to do it or maybe they'll just show up that like it'll be just 
on Twitter. Like they're just going to say, you know, due to circumstances of the Raw Women's Champion being on Championship being on SmackDown and vice versa, uh, Becky and Charlotte last night had a, you know, whatever. Like I could see them oh, just doing it, back, like so not even on disgusted. the show. It's just transferred. They show up on each show with the, the belt, and it, that's how it happens. Like I, I could, would be disgusted. Dude. I, I'm I would be so you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh my gosh. So, uh, oh lord. All right. Well, this is gonna this is gonna be very interesting. Now, I'm now very interested to see how this all uh, pans itself out. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, let's see here. The main event: Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, Ashley. Go ahead. This one, man. This this is something else. <laughs> this is something else, and I. Again, I every time I talk to you, Matt, and this every chance that I get, I will praise Ponytail Brock. I just I love the look. <laughs> it cracks me up every time, and especially that he's a, a baby face now and he can smile and like he's just like he could be a little bit more animated and just like get into who he is as the Brock Lesnar character, which is like weird to say because like you don't really think of Lesnar having a character, but you know like who he is. So it's just. Man, like it just, it just, I love it. I, I, I absolutely love it. So that's why, selfishly, like I would love to see this whole thing play out with Hammond staying on Roman Reigns' side and, and tr- like have been telling the truth in regards to being, you know, with Roman and not having anything to do with Lesnar and Lesnar just be having uh, been playing mind games this entire time. Um, just because I, I want to keep seeing Babyface Brock, you know, I want to I want him to have the ponytail going on. Like I don't I don't want him to change. Like I I love this guy. Like I've always been a fan of his, but this is just like I don't know what it is. I just between that and the flannels and his little belt buckle, it's just it cracks me up. And and it's amazing because he looks like that and he can still just kill you in in thirty seconds. You know what I mean? So it's just it's amazing. So. This, of course, this whole story is, in my opinion, the thing that's been carrying WWE. It's just Roman Reigns himself is just, it's amazing to see the development and just how just untouchable he's been this past year plus now at, at this point. Um, that's why I don't think that they take the title off of him. I think that they, that Roman retains here is, is again, especially with it being at this event, I don't, I don't think they would do something that monumental which is in my opinion what it would be at at this point for Reigns to lose the title um I I don't think they would do that here I think they would do that at a a bigger event so I'm going with Reigns retaining here and I don't think we get a a final resolution on where Hammond resides either I think something happens where he's going to interfere and maybe it backfires on both Roman and Lesnar so it's kind of still unclear on who he was trying to help um, I think maybe something like that and like the Usos then come out and I see it, it, it kind of being like a, a convoluted mess like that or in, but no, I, I see it being like a, a clean victory too is maybe, maybe it's not so much on that. Maybe I'm, I'm kind of as much as I'm saying that now, rather I, I'm kind of 50, 50 on that. Like, I don't, I don't know if you want to cleanly pin Brock here and I don't think, you know, as I'm, I'm talking it out, I don't think it'd be that big of a deal as much as I just crapped on the DQ finish from Raw I don't I don't think it'd be as crazy to have a DQ finish here um I don't know that the way this this match ends I'm, I may be a little unsure of but I see Reigns retaining as the champion um this is going to continue I don't see this being a one and done type thing and I, I don't also think like I said we get a, a resolution on where Heyman resides I think it just either I don't I don't know I don't know and that's what's cool about this like it's not really a a clear vision of how it's going to play out and that's obviously kudos to Heyman as well because he's just everything he does like the simplest things like the simplest like posts and tweets that he sends out to just like the little comments he makes the facial expressions it's just everything so long story short Roman retains here but the way it plays out is very difficult to determine Mm. Yeah, that that is the whole story here. I, I I don't think there's too many people who think Brock could win, which is crazy to think that Brock Lesnar doesn't have a chance in this match because it's Brock freaking Lesnar. I think this is the biggest threat Roman has had to his championship so far. 
I mean, I could see a, a, a slight chance of Brock retaining or retaining or winning and then uh, Heyman aligning himself. And it's a clear cut. Heyman was playing Roman all along. I mean, that's a slight chance. I don't think that that's going to happen because to me, this is like you said, I think this is the beginning, not the end of this story. Like this is just another step to the ultimate payoff, which will eventually realize, I think eventually it's going to be Roman uh, getting screwed by Paul Heyman and Paul Heyman is was truly with Brock the whole time. That's my guess. And when that's going to play out and have its finale, probably going to be a while, maybe all the way to WrestleMania for that matter. It, it's going to be a while, but this is going to be, like you said, it, it, it's going to be up to the interpreter to decide who uh, uh, Paul Heyman is is trying to help. In a, c- a scenario I'm thinking in my head is both guys are down. Uh, maybe a double close line or they're just both exhausted. It's the fourth quarter of the match. Paul Heyman grabs the championship and tosses it to uh, in the middle of the ring, trying to get to Roman, but maybe accidentally gets too close to Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar hits uh, Roman Reigns with the championship, inadvertently helping uh, Brock Lesnar. And uh, while, while Brock's not going to win, Roman could come back to that and say, you know, uh, you know, listen, wise man, you know, I, I want I want you to be straight up here and that kind of thing again, leading Roman to distrust Bra- uh, Paul Heyman a little bit more. I think that's the only way that you could one of the scenarios that could happen where, like you said, unintentionally helps Brock, but is plausibly trying to help Roman. And that's one example. Um, but Roman does retain. I think Paul Heyman has a big part in that in that match uh, in terms of uh, the storyline of how Brock loses this. Um, And it's going to be, I think, again, a very, very good match. These two have had I don't know how many matches now. It seems like five or six at this point, but they work so well together. I'm not complaining. And it's been a while. Uh, I'm and not it feels a, fresh. It yeah, feels it, completely it does. Fresh time, you know? and, and I think it also feels fresh because Roman is not in the tired babyface role. He's in one of the exactly. best possible roles he's ever he's in a career defining role right now uh he doesn't feel forced he feels very natural and i loved the hilarious line he gave brock on smackdown saying are, are you some kind of dumbass like not not looking at the contract and just signing it i found that hilarious the way that and then he called just, him a dumb farmer yeah a dumb farmer. like and he <laughs> yeah, said it so just, genuinely yeah it yeah. was just oh god it's, it's so like something great. like a, a, a like your natural reaction like yep. like i'm sitting here like you're you would your normal human being would be like yeah he's just signed a contract without reading it like yeah that's something we would say and thank you dude like you're mm-hmm. actually saying something that's completely obvious and not like not rocket science it's <laughs> yeah. like you're a dumbass like that is something that you would was, say like especially you're uh, to your opponent like come on. <laughs> are you some kind of dumbass it was one of the it, just the way he said it and he's yeah. looking brock dead in the face because yeah, yeah like who is that stupid to just not look at a contract and sign it uh it, it was it was it was great i loved it and uh having these two in the ring you know what kind of match you're gonna get it's gonna be it's mm-hmm. gonna be just i mean hard hitting it's gonna be just a classic i think and um i think that the end is going to be a very Paul Heyman determinative ending with Roman Reigns retaining, but it's not going to come without questions of, well, Paul Heyman could have been helping Brock here, even though plausibly he could deny it and say, well, no, no, my tribal chief, I was trying to do this. And Paul Heyman calling, he won't even say Roman. I love how he refers to him as his superior title of my tribal chief. And he actually like welled up tears a couple of weeks ago on SmackDown. Um, it, it just, it's so good. It's so good. So I think that Brock loses, but uh, this storyline, I think it's far from over. I don't know when Brock and Roman is going to happen again. Some people have pointed to WrestleMania. We'll see. But this is, to me, part one of this storyline. Yeah, and that's it's interesting that you bring that up because I think, th- and it's crazy to think that like it's pretty much time to start thinking about WrestleMania, right? Because Survivor Series is kind of yep. like the semi, like the preseason, I guess you would say, like or. You know, just like the just the kind of the warm up season, and then like because you got Rumble right after that, and then it's go time pretty much. So it's it's crazy to think like, and as we get closer and closer, like I just I don't know about you know like with the Rock and all that you know talk and everything like that because if if it's not the Rock, you know, which I do, you think it has to be Survivor Series the Rock would debut, and if if not there, then it's not going to happen. I actually. Um... Don't and here's the thing. I I um, just had my week in review and I um, 
talked with um, one of my co-hosts, and I said, I do not believe that The Rock is going to be here this year. And it's it's there's a, there's a new report yeah. floating around um, that Rock is actually not going to be available this year to movie like filming schedule. He's going to be in Australia during Survivor Series. He's not going to be able to make it this year. And they're pointing more towards next year, WrestleMania 39 in L.A. that he would actually face Roman oh, Reigns. Oh, that's right. That's right. So yeah, that, that yeah. was floating around. Now, I don't know how much credibility there is to that. The Rock could still show up at Survivor Series, and then we're off to the races with uh, Rock and, and Roman. I would hope they pull the trigger this year because who knows what the landscape's going to look like next year. Maybe they end up turning Roman babyface, and they don't have the patience for it. I mean, 18 months from now, everything could be different. The bloodline may not exist. Roman may not be as hot of a heel. Like I hope that they do it this year, given that the, the iron's hot strike now, um, you, because who knows what next year is going to look like, but that's the latest is that the rock is actually not available this year. That's, but yeah, you know, take weird. that with a grain of salt. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's why, and that's why I think like, like we were just saying that this is just the beginning for Roman and Brock. I think like, it's, it's I don't want to say it's a safe bet, but like when Lesnar does lose here, which again it's it's so crazy to think about and to actually say, but in my opinion when Lesnar does lose here, and it's it's not going to be shocking, right? Like because that's kind of how how Lesnar has been portrayed these past you know handful of years. He's going to go away for a while, so I could see him going away until the Royal Rumble and being a surprise entrant there maybe winning or maybe being i don't know i don't know maybe he would win and then that that would be the way he would get back to roman and then they can just resume that going from there um i just think that would be that would be an easy way if if they're uncertain with anything else that would be another easy go-to match because while this is happening on thursday a lot of people aren't going to see it and or hold it really to that high of a regard regardless of what happens unless Brock wins and you know like it's this big deal you know then they may be upset but you know that that'd be a whole other thing at that point but if things just kind of play out kind of you know like just if it's more of a story and just like like we were saying Paul Heyman focus and Roman retains I think that they could easily get away with Lesnar disappearing until after Survivor Series maybe around Rumble and then just going from there. Yeah, there's no no shame in that. And we don't expect Brock to be there. I mean, even once a month, we're like, oh, cool, Brock's going to be here this month. Like, I mean, we, we know what kind of schedule Brock has built yeah. into. Uh, and it, it's his character right now. Like you said, his character is... It's all. It's not a character. This, I believe, is who Brock is. It looks like he just. Like, yeah. I mean, drove off his farm, got on a plane, and uh, showed up at the arena. I mean, he's in his home clothes. It feels like. Um, I'm not he's a fan of an Uber. Well, yeah, like yeah, seriously, and and then uh, just didn't talk to the Uber driver the whole time, and just told him to shut up. I don't want to talk. Like, I mean, like, I'll be in the back. Yeah, like I'll be in the back. Do not talk to me. You know, yeah. like that's that that's that's Brock Lesnar, and that's what I love about the guy because mm-hmm. uh, I can relate uh, to a lot of it. But I think oh, that yeah. um, Brock Lesnar. I mean, I'm not a fan of the ponytail. I'm actually uh, to me, it's to I me. Know. I know you love it. I know a lot of I people know. love it. I think it's he's just too old to be doing it. I, I, know, I know that, but at the same time, I appreciate it. Of just like Brock does whatever the hell Brock wants to do, and no one's going to say anything about it. And what's hilarious is too that Brock even said that in his promo, a short promo, a couple of weeks ago that. <laughs> That, you know, Brock Lesnar does what Brock Lesnar wants to do. It's 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 the truth. There's no story to that. Does. Yeah, he shows up how he wants. He grows his hair how he wants. Vince doesn't say boo about it. I guarantee you, he just shows up in his like his, his like you said his um his his cut off sleeve uh, plaid shirt. He comes in his cowboy boots, his jeans. Like, I mean, this yeah, is I, just yeah. Brock. <laughs> and I could see him maybe yeah. having one carry on bag, just one duffel bag with him. Yeah. And just literally like that's how he got into his Uber car with his duffel bag. Like you say, he left his farm in that attire, had his duffel bag in case he needed to change or anything like that. And I'm sure he did. Like he probably he's probably flying back that night too. Like, oh, yeah. And that's the craziest that's, thing. Like that's it probably what I was just, just gonna say. Yeah. It probably is just like his personal belongings, like you know, so like you know, he has somewhere to play when he has to go to the ring. Like just for oh, I'm just I'm sorry that didn't cuss, but just for stuff like that. So Oh, it's just, and I think that's why I love the ponytail because, like you said, it's just Brock not giving a you know what and mm-hmm. just being Brock, you know. So, and it's it's refreshing <laughs> because not many guys in WWE are like that. So no. that's why, in my opinion, I appreciate Brock so much more because who knows how much longer we'll have him? Because there was a while like he wasn't even signed, right? So I don't know. Like it's it's the the as the years pass, like I feel like we're winding down on Brock, and and then who do we have? You know. I, I know the Brock is he's a he's a once in a generation star. 
Um, we have to appreciate every time that we see Brock Lesnar. I know there was a time when we were all tired of seeing him as champion. He's an absentee champion, this and that. Like, we need to appreciate it. Just like when The Undertaker was getting close to the end of his career, a lot of us were saying, oh, my God, no more matches, Taker, please, please, please. And now we're saying, oh, man, I kind of miss The Undertaker on, you know, on, on TV. I wish he would come out and do something, you know, say something, do something. Not that we want matches from Undertaker, but sometimes you don't appreciate it until it's gone. I think that's a lot of life, a lot of times with everything, that you don't appreciate it until it's gone. But... Brock Lesnar, I think he's got a couple of years, I think, left in him. And, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, th- that'll be fine. I'm fine with uh, just a couple more matches out of him and uh, WrestleMania type deal, Rumble type deal. Uh, and obviously these special events that he's getting paid many, many, many zeros on that check to be at. Um, that's that's uh, that's the Brock Lesnar way. And like you were saying, that's exactly what I was thinking is, well, everyone else is going to get stuck there probably for another day or two or whatever on the, the, the flight that they have booked. Brock Lesnar has probably booked his own charter flight back, <laughs> like immediately following that show where he's got this <clears throat> private jet already set up to be back in the United States by like, you know, uh, the, the next day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He probably doesn't even shower. He's probably just like, just a quick change in the back and let's go. Probably, yep. you know, he just wants to get back and be done. Yep. So that's, that's, a, that's a long flight. For someone who doesn't like to travel already, that's a long flight. It is, but he'd probably sleep through most of it because on the way back, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, he's, this is, this is hilarious. I just, I yeah. just love. I wish we had uh, a camera. Oh, I oh, wish Lord. they would do some type of like, just, what was it like, the WWE day of, like, for Brock? Uh, I would I would pay so much. I would pay my annual subscription yeah, for Peacock. I would too to see that. I, I would too. It just just to see, uh, but the reality of it. I don't want it produced. I want no, raw footage. Just follow him. Just follow, follow him through the airport. See how he t- deals with people, like yes. yelling at him. Uh, like trying to come up to him, uh, just like I, I would, I want to see Brock Lesnar in that scenario. They have, they haven't done it to my knowledge of anything like that with Brock, and I think there's yeah, a reason for that. So. They don't want yeah. their stars to be, uh, I guess, per- portrayed as unapproachable or th- that they don't like people, or because there's, <laughs> you know, that's the opposite of what WWE yeah, tries yeah. to portray. So it, it just it, Brock Lesnar is his own entity, and it's I just love everything about the guy, even when he's heel. Um, he's the same guy essentially, except he can smile right now. So, right. Um, God, this is but this match is going to be really good. But you and I are in lockstep with this that Roman Reigns retains, but it's there's going to be a lot of Paul Heyman uh, in terms of the finish here, and there's going to be a lot of question marks, even though Roman Reigns retains of who he was really trying to help. That's going to be the story coming out of this, I think. So. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this this is uh, going to be a fun pay per view. I'm not going to be able to actually watch it live, at least for part of it. I mean, I have to quote unquote work my big boy job, but I know yeah. some of you will be able to. A lot of most of us are going to probably watch it on demand uh, after the fact. But um, yeah, th- this should be a good show. I mean, I, I know that I kind of poo pooed on it a little bit at the beginning, but I think that you have some really solid matches, some really solid storylines. You have some convoluted ones, but ultimately this is going to be pay per view that has. There's going to be a lot to talk about on the back end. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm glad it's finally here and happening, so we can finally just kind of move on and let the draft play out and just kind of see how everything unfolds and just kind of go from there. Uh, definitely. So, Ashley, thank you so much for being here. Before you leave, how does everyone get in touch with you? If you want to share, maybe your Twitter. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, feel free to follow me on Twitter at a s h m a n n s. Very good, very good. And Ashley, we'll have to have you on soon. And again, I have no idea when Survivor Series is. I'm assuming it's like a four week span. I mean, maybe right the, the week before Thanksgiving is my guess. But, uh, oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. So um, we'll definitely have you on then, if not sooner. And I know you occasionally pop on with Mimi on the AEW Dynamite review that people love. So uh, if anybody wants to hear more of Ashley, you can at least count on uh, pay per views, but maybe even uh, maybe even sooner than that. So. Uh, Indeed. All right. Thanks so much, Ashley. Have a good night. Thanks. You too, Matt. Bye.